So good afternoon, happy Wednesday, and uh, welcome to today's webinar where we're going to have a review and a brief demo on windshield parts classification, which is also known as um, windshield parts link. And we ran this webinar last year once, maybe twice. And I, I got to apologize for not running it again sooner because we got a lot of positive feedback um, just because for people who were windshield um, users, got a lot of value out of this um, and a lot of good tips. So that's what the point is about this webinar. It's if you're a windshield user, we want to be able to give you tips and help you um, utilize windshield in a more efficient manner. And if you're not using windshield or you're not using um, yet for your you know, P, uh, PLM system, then I'm going to give you some insight to what Windchill can do. So leading the webinar and the demo today is Shane Rigger, who is a solutions consultant and applications en engineer with um, PTC's Virtual Center of Excellence. So it's great to have Shane on today uh, leading our presentation and demo. So Shane, without further ado, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Rob. So like Rob was talking about, what we're going to be doing is going over Winchell's part classification. And the entire point of parts classification or parts link is around enabling you to manage different parts based on uh, attributes to promote reuse and reduce inventory in your windshield system. So what we're going to be doing today is going through a quick PowerPoint. I'm going to then I'll jump into the demonstration. I'll actually walk through what it looks like to search for a part using part classification and then also adding new parts and how that would all be managed. So firstly, uh, I'm going to talk about the most common challenges around managing different components in, in their design and manufacturing processes. And the first point here starts with uh, the designers. So often they have issues around finding or reusing the correct parts. And what happens is that leads to duplications throughout their systems. So what that's saying is whenever an engineer is having issues finding the correct part or even manufacturing, they might recreate that part or reorder that part when it's not necessary because they can't find it the first time. And because designers are recreating those models, it takes time away from them and also adds clutter to any existing system because then you have a lot of duplication of parts. And lastly, having more inventory, that what that's going to do is it increases cost throughout any organization, especially whenever you're working with thousands, if not tens of thousands of different parts which we see a lot of. So the solution to those challenges is with PTC's uh, Winchell Part Classification or Parts Link. And it all starts around with being able to quickly search for the parts already existing. This is what that would look like. You can see it in the image on the right-hand side. Uh, so this is the advanced searching. Uh, you can see that you can search by type, the context, you can give classifications to the parts and also criteria. For, so for example, inside outside diameters. So you're able to really get granular with the searching. Uh, and then also there's a tailored part structure configuration, configuration that we'll also see in the demonstration. And what this allows for is your, your users to quickly find any parts already existing that are already in windshield. So one, you're creating it, being able to search upon it, quickly find any parts with the structure configurations. And then of course, this is giving you that single point, uh, one single pane of glass for your product structure. All of your parts are within the same structure and it allows for that ease of access to that information. So now getting into the demo, like I said, what we're gonna do is understand what it looks like to search for a part within Windchill. Uh, there's a couple different ways, like I just went over, and then also opening an object, what details are in there, things like that. Starting off, uh, what we're seeing here is just the the search menu for Windchill. We're in Windchill right now, and we can start with the advanced search. So with the advanced search, what you can do is come in, choose on different choose different criteria to search upon, such as a WT part. Uh, if there was a document that you were searching for, you would, of course, select on that. In this case, we're working with parts. And then you can choose the classification for that part, the criteria, anything that that part would have, and it allows you to quickly find it. The way we like to, the main way we like to search for parts within Windchill is with the Classification Explorer. And you can see that this is set up very easy for any user to come into. 
So if we expand our tree structure here on the left-hand side, you can see the breakdown. And on the right-hand side, it's just the corresponding uh, information on what you have selected. So if you select it on integrated circuit, you're going to see everything down, down below that. And then you can also notice that there's images as well. And again, that all is it's it's all about making it easy for any user to come in. They can choose whether it's the image, understand how many different parts are within that category. It makes it very easy to search upon. If you needed to find, let's say, an integrated circuit, again, you know to go to electronic, integrated circuit, and then you would have all of those components that you would need. And then Another good example, let's say you were working on the mechanical side and you needed to find a washer. So as soon as someone would come into the classification explorer, they quickly understand, okay, we need to go mechanical. You would have all your different components listed out, in this case, the fasteners, and then you would see all of the different options uh, within here. So then once you do narrow down your search results in the classification explorer, you simply again, select on that object and then everything that's in Windchill in this case, as, as far as washers go, are going to populate in the list. So you're gonna notice there's over 51 objects here and that's common. So you're gonna have a lot of different parts that you're managing. And there's a couple different ways to facet down your search. So firstly, you have your faceted searching on the left-hand side where you can expand all of the different filtering options such as uh, the sourcing status, if you wanted to do outside or inside diameters. It really allows you to, again, to get granular with the searching for any part that you're managing within here. So this is how we're able to help out with that part replication or recreation of any parts that you didn't know existed. It allows you to quickly find those and search upon those within Windchill. Again, never having to leave the environment. So once you do narrow down your search results, and generally what would happen is you have a list of all your parts. To know exactly which part you're working with, you might have to open that part up. But within Windchill, what you could utilize is what's called the thumbnail navigator. So if you hovered over any of your parts that were in this list, you would get the visualization. You can do some interrogations like zooming in, zooming out. You can understand the relationships to this part. So understand what products this is being used in. So that quickly allows you to go through any, any list of objects that are in your, your result here and then know exactly if that's the part you need to be working with. And then of course, all of that information that we filtered upon, you can scroll horizontally and see all of that related information, such as your classification, who created it, all of that important data. Then now once you narrow down your search results, use the classification explorer, you found the part, now you wanna open it and begin working. You simply just click on, you can click on the view information button and it's gonna bring you into the details page for your part here. And right here, we're just in the details uh, page for a WT part. All details tabs are gonna be high level general information here. You can see the same, some of the same information we saw previously, like the classification for this part. And that's actually how it's organized in the classification explorer. And also another really important tab for parts specific, uh, specifically is the where used. So the value here is that, let's say you have, we'll use the washer example. Let's say you have a washer and it's being used on five different of your products. What you can do is come to this part, this washer, go into the where use tab and see the impact that this one washer would have. So that, again, that's another way that it's able to help with understanding what, which parts you already have existing and the impact they have across all of the different products that they're currently in. So once you understand that impact, of course, you can go into that product. And let's say you needed to add a new part. You could simply come up to insert new. This is creating a new part into this structure. And then you can, again, begin to reuse the part that you're creating here. So somewhat similar to what we saw before, we're going to give it a type. And in this case, just the part, same thing that we filtered down on previously, and then go through your normal attributes, like your names. You can have, you can pick and choose which attributes are required per your organization. So if the view isn't required or the gathering part wasn't required, you don't have to require those. You can, it's really granular on what is required and what is not. And then th again, this is how we organize those parts and in into different classifications. So you, you can see the same exact tree structure we saw earlier. It's going to work throughout the system, give you the same view. 
In this case, we're going to select on those washers because we're adding a new washer into that category or that classification. And then we can also add in all of that, those attributes that we saw earlier as well. And this is how you're able to search on those parts from the classification explorer and that and the advanced searching. So just finishing out the part here, then we're just going to finish. And then what's going to happen is that's going to be automatically it added into our in our classification explorer and it got added into our part structure here. And you can see that that update as well. And once you do that, because we made a change to an object within Windchill, an assembly in Windchill, Windchill's doing its job, checking this out for us and letting us know that we need to check it back in uh, because we made a change to it. And that's Windchill, again, doing its job, making sure we follow a process, making sure any user that comes in to make changes to objects has all of the information necessary for everybody to understand the changes. Okay, so now that we've added that part in, now let's say you wanna search upon that part. We'll go back to the searching uh, functionality within Windchill and then simply search within the table that we have for the different washers. So typing in the same name we just added in and you'll see that populate in. So here we can see our new parts autom automatically been added in. It has all the version and history information that would be there as you were to go through and make changes. And then to wrap up, we're going to go over the actual administration for this. So the tree structure that we saw earlier, the different classifications, the attributes, this is how you would manage that. And it's going to be, again, the same exact view that we've seen previously within the tree structure. So this is the breakdown for that. We could go down to the flat washer category we have, see, see how this information would be displayed for an end user. And then also, this would be the attributes from the back end. So it's, again, very extremely configurable. It's easy to set up. It's easy to add into. If there's already not an existing part, like you saw, you can add that directly from your, your bill of material or your product even. And before we wrap up, I want to talk about the benefits that you get with parts classification. And it starts with the productivity. So in, instead of your designers trying to recreate the wheel, recreate any of the parts that they don't know already exist, it allows them to focus on value-added design work. And you might pick a part that you weren't necessarily looking for, but it was the closest thing you could find. It could lead to some rework down the line, which is quite expensive. And you want to be able to reduce the product complexity for those users so they don't have to search through numerous different parts to find what they're looking for. And lastly, it can reduce the inventory cost on those parts and your inventory is much smaller because you have a way for your engineers to find the information without going through and recreating everything that they're looking for. Okay, that's all I had to cover today for Winchell's parts classification or parts link. Uh, Rob, are there any questions that came through chat? No, there's no questions at this point. Um... But I want to thank everybody for being on today. Uh, Shane, as always, uh, a great job in your, um, you know, your overview, your, your review. Yeah, you know, this, this is something, this is a tool that absolutely can help you manage parts a lot better and therefore save a lot of time um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of grief also. Um, so thank you, Shane. So next week, uh, we are going to have a webinar on, I'm sorry, I'm pulling this up now. Um, we're going to have a webinar on Unite Technology, and this is specifically for Creo, looking at um, flexibility that Creo's Unite Technology, and this is with the base license of Creo, um, how it helps you work with multiple CAD systems. And then on the 14th, we're going to have a webinar uh, showing um, Windchill's manufacturing uh, process managing link. Uh, and it also is going to show bomb structuring and reporting. So hopefully that these upcoming webinars will um, you know, be educational and provide some value to you guys. If you have any questions, you can just respond to the email of the, um, the invitation to these webinars. And let me know if you want to see more of an in-depth demo or a custom demo uh regarding anything creo windchill or anything ptc 
I'll have the recording uploaded by tomorrow and send that onto our YouTube page and then send this out to everybody so that you can review it again at your leisure and share it with your friends. So Shane, thanks again. And thank you to our audience for being on today and have a great week. Take care.